before we go any further, let's save our new document. I'm going to go to the File pull-down menu and bring my cursor down to the Save command. You'll see that the keyboard shortcut is listed to the right as Command S. If you're working on a Windows PC, the keyboard shortcut will be Control S. I'm going to click that button. And when I do so, it's going to bring up the Save As dialog box. Now, if you're not in Chapter 2, what you'd want to do is go back and navigate your way to our Project Files InDesign CS6 Essentials folder, and then click on Chapter 2 so that we can save this file to go with what we're working with for this unit of our InDesign course. I'm going to change that file name to my first name, so it would be Randy, you can put yours there, and the number 2 to go for the files that we're working with for Chapter 2 of our InDesign CS6 course and I'm going to manually enter the file suffix for that, which is .indd. If you're on the Windows platform, you'll see that your computer added that file suffix automatically. On the Mac, we want to make sure that we type that in, so InDesign puts that file suffix down there. I'm going to hit the Save button, and I'll have my saved document. Now, we actually have three guides that are set inside of our page. The first one is this margin guide that we set for an eighth of an inch all the way around the inside of the document. The second one is a column guide, although you don't see anything really defined there because we only set one column inside of our InDesign card flyer. To show you what column guides look like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Layout pull-down menu and I'm going to select the Margins and Columns menu command. This opens up that Margins and Columns dialog box. Now, as I look here, it says that I have margins of an eighth of an inch all the way across. I know that. But beneath here, it says I have one column. You may remember when we were first creating this, I said you can't have no columns you must have at least one. I'm going to click on the little triangle that points up and make it two, three columns, and now I'll be able to show you what column guides look like right here. One, two, three. When you define columns, what it does is it basically subdivides what's known as the live area or the space in your InDesign document that resides inside of your margins. So I have three columns here, and I have a gutter, or a space in between those columns, of 0.1667, or a sixth of an inch, right here and right here. Now we don't need three columns for our InDesign document, so I'm going to bring that back down to one. Bring this back front and center, and I'm just going to say OK. A third type of guide that you can create on your InDesign document is what's known as a ruler guide. We get those by putting our cursor in either the horizontal ruler here or the vertical ruler and literally dragging those guides to exactly where we want them to be to make things easier for us to align them. I'm going to show how that works by taking my cursor and putting in my ruler at the very top of the document window. This is what's known as our horizontal ruler. And when I hold the mouse button down, my cursor turns into two little arrows that point up and down just like this and there's a little bar in between that defines where that ruler is going to be. I'm going to drag that down to three and a half inches. As I do that, I actually get three indications that I've hit exactly that point. One of them shows right here in the little gray box just to the right of my cursor. It shows three and a half inches. If you look at the upper left of our screen, in the control panel, you'll see that the Y edit box also shows three and a half inches. And if you look all the way over to the left, about halfway down, you'll see in my vertical ruler, the tick mark says that I'm at exactly three and a half inches. If I miss that by just a little bit, I'll be able to see that tick mark and I'll see the measure is not where I want it to be. When I hit it dead on the mark, as I have right here, 
the number shows that I'm at three and a half inches to the right of my cursor in the control panel and that tick mark appears. If you're at the right spot, release the mouse button and you will have set your first ruler spread guide. We're going to place two more of those horizontal guides. I'm going to take my cursor and put it in the horizontal ruler and I'm going to place another one at two inches and then I'm going to take one more of those horizontal guides and I'm going to place that at five inches. Now you'll notice as I drag all three of these down that my cursor is sitting outside the page and I'm drawing what are known as ruler guides across an entire spread. So if I had facing pages, a left hand and a right hand page, these guides would actually go across both pages. If you want to set a ruler just on the page itself, and we're going to do that here just so we can tell the difference between artificial margins we set and the guides we've set for where this is going to fold, you do that by placing your cursor in this example in a horizontal ruler, holding the mouse button down, and then dragging it inside the page like this. When you draw it inside the page, it only shows in the page or only on one page if we are working with a two-page spread with facing pages. See, if I drag it outside, I can see that goes beyond the edges of the page. If I bring my cursor back inside, I can see clearly that it just shows within the page trim or the page size that we've set. I'm going to put one of those an eighth of an inch, 3.375 or 3 and 3 eighths inches, just above that center horizontal guide that we set before. I'm going to go into my horizontal ruler and set another one, an eighth of an inch below, 3 and 5 eighths or 3.625 inches, just like so. Let's do the same thing here down below. I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to drag this down to, in this case, 4 and 7 eighths inches, 4.875, and then an eighth of an inch below at 5.125 inches. Let's put margins around the top fold right here. So I'm going to take my cursor, set it in the middle of the ruler here, and I'm going to drag that down to 2.125 inches, and then I'm going to draw a guide down just above there, and I'm going to hit that tick mark, and it should show 1.875 inches, but for some reason, that's not going to happen here. That's an occasional situation that occurs. Now, I know I want this to be at 1.875 to make it precisely an eighth of an inch. I can't hit that spot. It's hopping one side or the other of that. To put this exactly where I want to do it, I need to zoom in a little bit closer. I'm going to go to my View pull-down menu, and I'm going to zoom in. The keyboard shortcut for that is Command and Equal Sign. If you were working on a Windows PC, that would show as the Control key and then the Equal Sign. And when I select that, I go from 100 to 150 percent. I want to see it even bigger. So I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts to zoom in even larger. If you're on a Windows PC, press Control-2. Since I'm working on a Mac today, I'm going to go Command-2, and that brings it up to 200% size. If I want to see it even larger, I can go Command-4 and bring that up to 400% size. Now when I take my cursor and place it right on that guide, I can hold the mouse button down and I can bring it to exactly where I wanted it to be, 1.875 inches. So the keyboard shortcut for seeing your page at 400% or four times the normal size is Control-4 on the Windows machine, Command-4 if you're working on a Mac. If you want to see the page at twice the size, you go Command-2 on the Mac or Control-2 on your Windows PC. If you want to see it at 100% size, you go Command-1 or Control-1 if you're working on that Windows machine. If you want to see the Fit in Windows view 
on the Windows machine, you would go Control-0, or in my case, since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to go Command-0. And that allows me to very quickly switch from different display view percentages. That I can clearly see where I'm at right up here at the top of my document window. Let's save our work so we've got these guides saved exactly the way we want them to be. Command S as I'm working on my Mac. Control S if I'm working on the PC.